Hello and welcome to a digital rebar demo where we show the end of smoke breaks for systems operators, um, as I like to think of it, where we eliminate reboots for provisioning in uh, deployment, uh, which is huge. Uh, reboots take a lot of time, some systems 10 to 15 minutes, uh, some systems need multiple reboots, and the changes to digital rebar and tip, if you enable them, which is simple to do, um, will eliminate the need to reboot in many, not all, but many situations um, to reprovision your operating system. And I want to demo that for you. I have a simple uh, three node system uh, built. I'll explain it in a little bit. Um, we've got screens uh, set up so we can actually watch the reboots. Uh, what we're doing here is basically leveraging KExec, which allows you to change kernels inside of a running system without having to repost that system. We'll explain that a little bit. There's a lot of gray bar time waiting for the non-KExec kernels to reboot, so I, I want to get to it pretty quickly. In this case, we have these three systems. Two of them are in a profile that has this KExec OK set to true. So those two systems here will use the new feature. This third one will not. And so uh, that will allow us to demo exactly what's going on. I've got them all built. In this case, we're using uh, packet systems with the emergency console. Uh, this is going to be my slow one. This will be my fast one for the demo. Uh, they're in exactly the same state. They both booted Sledgehammer. And what I've done is I've built a workflow for installing a CentOS, just a really traditional CentOS install. I will select it so you can see the pieces. CentOS install, adds the keys, installs the runner, which is very important in this case because putting the runner in the system allows you to then k-exec back into Sledgehammer. Um, it's a good normal process anyway. Then we finish the install and we complete the install, which marks it ready again. Greg's here to add color and some additional uh, real depth to the, uh, this demo as, as we get through the setup. And we've done the same thing for Ubuntu, it's in completely identical systems. And what's, what you'll notice in this case is that the only difference in these work, in, install workflows is the two of the machines have kexec OK on and the other one doesn't. Uh, so there's no workflow changes required to take advantage of this capability. It's built in to the way bootems are set up. And in the bootems that we have in TIP, which is going to be the 3.11 release, uh, you'll get this behavior automatically if you enable it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, first machine and my, my third machine, and I'm going to just tell them both to boot CentOS. For right now, CentOS is the preferred system because it has kexec baked in. So I can um, kexec from CentOS back to, to uh, uh, Sledgehammer, I can't do that in Ubuntu. I can only k-exec yeah. into Ubuntu. Yeah, by default. Ubuntu's base images um, install, minimal install that we use in DRP doesn't include the k-exec tools. So. Uh, all right, so we've got our two terminals. I'm going to go ahead and click CentOS over here and then jump back to the terminal so you can see them. Uh, both of them start acting right away. Well, that's not really true. One of them, the one on the left, k exec and immediately started the CentOS install process. So no reboot. The one on the right, it's rebooting. So it's going through, and we can't see it at this point, the basic post stage. As soon as the console turns on, we'll be able to watch it, DHCP and Pixie, and go through those processes. That alone getting to a point where it will start to Pixie takes nearly a minute. In the meantime, the other system has already started the installer process. Uh, so you can see right out of the gate how significant a delta this is between these two systems. Uh, and you don't run the risk of a post. So if a machine's gonna fail, it's much more likely to fail during that reboot post cycle. And so by eliminating the post, you're eliminating one of the times the machine powers up, it turns the fans on, it uses a lot more power. There's a lot more components in that process. Um, while we wait for this, because we still have some seconds, I'm going to jump over, take this third machine, and go ahead and, and make it an Ubuntu system so you can watch that also. 
So here's, uh, let me get the terminal up here close. And I'll change it to uh, blue. So the Ubuntu system in this case, once again, kexec enabled, goes immediately to install, skips the reboot and post. So uh, Ubuntu just started installing on this system. I'm gonna bring it over here and then bring my other installs back up. So this machine is finally getting to a post place where it's, it's getting, uh, it's getting the, the bootstrapping system in place. It hasn't actually started the install yet. And you can see in the meantime, CentOS up here is uh, happily going through its, its real install. So we're almost to the point where the install starts. There we go. Now the install started. So significant improvement in the post provision time. These are actually relatively fast from a boot time. Uh, we commonly hear 10 minutes, especially if you have a lot of RAM in a system and a lot of drives to enumerate and you turn on RAM testing, those are really significant ads in how this system is gonna run. Um, I'm going to pause. Greg, do you have commentary for this? No, it's, it saves a lot of time if you have a lot of systems that are reboot slowly, which most physical hardware seems to reboot slowly. Uh, and so from that perspective, right, this is a big change. Now, it doesn't yet apply to our image-based deployment. Um, it's built to apply, and this is a roadmap item for us because we're going through the process of making a major enhancement in how um, image deployments work and making them much easier to, easier to learn and then much more portable between systems. And so that uh, Digital Rebar Imager, which is RackN, it's a RackN uh, extension for Digital Rebar, um, that will then be able to take advantage of the same capability as part of its task execution and then k-exec, so lay down an image and then k-exec into that image um, and boot it immediately. So that eliminates all of this install time. So most of what we're waiting for right now is install time, um, just the normal install process. Now it's actually done in the background, yeah. The CentOS one is Cent exactly CentOS finished. Done. And you can see, so I'm it's moving some things out of the way. The, up here on the, this first one is complete. We're all the way done. The runner's already running in the new OS. Um, ready for additional tasks. Yeah. So, super fast uh, from that perspective. And you can see in the background we're still, um, Ubuntu is moving along. Now, because Ubuntu doesn't have kexec uh, in it, it's going to have to reboot at the end. Um, and the same is true with the CentOS install. When it finishes its process, it's going to have to reboot also, one of the advantages of the k-exec process is that we also k-exec at the end of the install and it doesn't require the reboot um, at the end of the install to, to bring the system up. It actually just k-execs in. And so it creates some, um, some pretty significant uh, wins from that perspective. And you can see these systems are actually now coming in through the finished install process. There's still a reboot required for that. And I want to show you something from that perspective. So if I go over to workflows, you'll see this reboot as part, as part of the normal process. Uh, that if in a k-exec enabled systems is a k-exec, which is sort of the magic of what we're showing you. And we're going through. So what I can do here is I can take this machine that we've, we've been watching do the installs. I'm like, you know, I'm done. I'm going to reset this system back to sledgehammer. And jump back here, you'll notice it just went straight into booting Sledgehammer, uh, or starting Sledgehammer. I should stop using the word booting at this point. Um, and, and so it's still a Sledgehammer startup, uh, downloading it from the network, taking advantage of all the things that Sledgehammer can do. It just doesn't require us uh, to go through the full post cycle. So in this case, you can see the two operating systems we installed. Ubuntu is a little bit faster than CentOS, so it caught up. Um, had to go through a reboot cycle, and they're doing exactly that. So um, the one that we just sent back into Sledgehammer is actually just finishing the full install, and it's going to be done um, in just a second. It's, we're beating the network timing, so there's a, yeah, a little bit of loop. Yeah, it's done. We're just, it just hasn't yeah, checked you in. Res you resorted your, uh, your... Oh, did I? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So that's already in Sledgehammer waiting to start. 
Um, and we could literally start a whole new install, just go back, yay, it's always fun to do this, and just flip them through a install process and watch them go ahead and reboot. Um, and once again, this is straight into the install process while these machines are still waiting for that initial DHCP post. It's crazy how long and slow that is. Um, the other thing that's really cool about this um, that, that blows my mind when I think about it is that once you have a process running like this, you can eliminate Pixie DHCP needs from the systems altogether. Right, we are not going through a Pixie process. We're not going through DHCP. Well, we are literally we're going through DHCP to get addresses. Okay. We're not using DHCP for its Pixie boot process. Okay. So there's some some advanced things we've been doing for customers where we're literally starting in a um, specialized environment directly in, on on the motherboard, and in those cases, right, you can eliminate a lot of the uh, intermediate steps uh, from these systems having to boot. There, and I think we just were finishing the installs. Yep, uh, the CentOS one finished, and then the Ubuntu one finished. So um, that gives you a sense. You, know, you can look at the time markers and see how much we saved. Identical systems, um, pretty significant improvement in how the systems work and how you keep going back through. Um, anything I missed? Nope, I think that's pretty much it. We, we're really excited about this functionality. It is still new. That's why it's in, in TIP. Uh, we're hardening it for, for uh, 3.11, and we're really looking forward to getting feedback on this and having people play with it, um, you know, sort of put it through its paces, because this is one of those things where if you don't know what you're doing, this is running with scissors. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, do not assume that this is like a universal thing that works in every situation. You're going to have to know that your hardware can do it. You're going to have to tune and, and play, and so it's actually nice to be able to say, let me switch back to Netboot if I need to, override the parameter and go, um, and test out my systems and make sure everything's working. But once again, it's not different workflows. Same workflow, we're just, we just got smart about if I'm changing boot environments and I can k-exec, I try to. So. Excellent. If you have questions, of course, rebar.digital. Um, to join the community, of course, racken.com uh, is the place to go for enterprise functionality, help, training, um, support. This is Rob Hirschfeld. And Greg Althaus. Signing out.